There, look! What does it say? What language is that? Brother Maynard, you're our scholar! It is Aramaic! <laughs> of course! Joseph of Arimathea! What does it say? It reads, Here may be found the last words of Joseph of Arimathea. He who is valiant and pure of spirit may find the Holy Grail in the castle of Og. What? The castle of Og. What is that? They must have died while carving it. Come on! Oh, that's what it says! Look, if he was dying, he wouldn't bother to carve Og. He'd just say it! Well, that's what's carved in the rock. Perhaps he was dictating it. Oh, shut up! Does it say anything else? No, just Og. Og. Do you suppose he meant the Kamigu? Where's that? In France, I think. Isn't there a St. Og's in Cornwall? No, that's St. Ives. Oh! Ah, uh, no, Og at the back of the throat. No, Og as in surprise and alarm. Oh, you mean sort of a ah! Yes, that's right. Ah! My god! It's a legendary black beast of. That's it! That's it! Run away! Run away! Run away! Ah! Ah! As the horrendous black beast lunged forward, escape for Arthur and his knights seemed hopeless, when suddenly the animator severed a fatal heart attack. <laughs> The cartoon para was no more. The quest for the Holy Grail could continue. Brilliant. Wonderful. Wow. Shia LaBeouf clap right there. Yes. I'm going to assume yes. that is Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh, yeah. 1975, baby. That is Wesley's <laughs> That is Wesley's favorite movie of all time. Wow. That, that is a classic. It is a great film. That's Anyways, welcome again to another episode of Bump That. Episode 41. Thank you guys. So 42. Much. 42. 42. 42. The answer to the question of the world. Episode 42. Correction. <laughs> Lo siento. Episode 42. If you have never clicked on a video before, hello. I am your host, Ileana. And we've got Brian in this corner. Ugh. <laughs> we've got KT in this corner. Blue. No. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and I am your host, Ileana. And we are siblings who love to nerd out and decided to show it... Share it with all of you people, and here you are listening. Welcome. Anyways, uh, today on this episode, we're going over Marvel movies and ranking our favorite Marvel movies. So we're going to do the tier list again, you know, Brian, Katie, Ileana type of thing, you know. And once a movie is chosen, it cannot be chosen again, and this will be our tier list. But before that, we're going to be going into some news, Disney, some Marvel, uh, Nintendo, uh netflix news and then we're gonna go into our individual segments and then the chunk so to begin the new segment disney is delaying most if not all of its 2022 live action lineup holy smokes they're making more <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah this is not good news for disney uh this is actually rather terrible news from disney um now, it's not as bad as it may seem. Some movies are just being pushed back uh, just a couple months. However, there are quite a few movies that are being delayed to 2023. Um, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is just being pushed back from March to May. Thor Love and Thunder is being pushed from May to July. Uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is being pushed from July to November. A lot of um, those are still in production, too. Some yes. Some are in, like, post. Some are, like, filming right now. Like, Wakanda Forever is probably in production I'm right guessing now. COVID's just getting in the way of everything. Trying yeah. To yeah. 
The the big one is Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. Great name uh, yeah. is bumped <laughs> from February of 2022 to July 28th of 2023. Um, what a also, bomb. yes, also um, from uh, or Indiana Jones, which is still not named Indiana that's Jones cur- Five. That's currently filming right now. Last we heard. Because Harrison Ford had an injury bug, uh, he yeah, was out really for three bad. months. So wow. they just started production uh, principal photography. Uh, they're in Sicily right now filming that thing. So yes, that's, so that's gonna be that's so gonna be a while. Yeah. Yes, it was supposed to come out July 29th, twenty two. Now allegedly it'll come out June thirtieth of twenty twenty three. Um, what does that spell for Disney and their live action films? Do you think? I mean, they're, just... they're, they're their moneymaker, mostly. You don't really see a whole lot of animated films coming from Disney nowadays anyways. So, I mean... Maybe mostly, two. Maybe If they're going to yeah. be animated, they're going to be like a Disney remake, like Lion King, where it is live action, no! animated. And then um, if it's Disney, it's going to be attached to, you know, uh, Pixar. So they're really not cracking out any other film so i guess it's just gonna be they got that one movie in kanto that's coming out this year and i think uh, that's yeah. a that's a mainly a disney uh production that's a non-pixar one right it um, is but i mean if you see but how, as far as original content it doesn't seem like they're if you look at like what the past those. uh disney movies have come out that have been animated you had like raya and the last dragon which i don't think did super well so i mean they're not really They've got Disney Plus, and I guess that's good for them. But other than that, it kind of seems like they're falling off a little bit of their um, animated films. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. Um, this is coming from Variety.com. Quote: uh, COVID nineteen has shaken up the way studios release their biggest movies, with many major tentpoles bucking tradition to land simultaneously in theaters and on digital platforms. So you know. I don't know how long this is going to last, this whole COVID thing. I I certainly hope not uh, much longer, but um, it's it's just interesting to see how much this is taking uh, a toll on yeah. the film industry. It's even more than that, too. The whole industry is changing, too. It's, it's literally because not just the COVID, but the whole streaming platform. That whole idea of just releasing movies and people just staying home and watching, you know, why pay $60 or more as a family to see a movie when you could see it for, you know, 20 bucks. It's experience, people. Just sneak in, just sneak in Chick-fil-A sandwiches like my mom used to. Chick-fil-A sandwiches, <laughs> the, the tinfoil wrapped hot dogs already yes. uh, yes. like with mustard or ketchup. Just like a Braves game, man. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like a Braves game. Um, but speaking of Disney, there are early reviews of Marvel's Eternals, the new movie that is coming out. Um, or has, has it already been released? Yeah. No, not yet. No, not really. Okay. So uh, the reviews that, you know, special behind the scenes people have already gone to see are very positive, highlighting it to be fun and an emotional ride. So, you know, are you guys looking forward to it? Is it even something that was on your radar before you saw news about it? Or Yeah, I mean, it's a Marvel film, and I feel like at this point, Marvel movies kind of have to be seen. It's whether Angelina you, Jolie in it. Whether you see it like the first weekend or you wait a couple weeks or, you know, see it later, eventually you're going to check it out. But, I mean, it's got a really interesting cast, a lot of fun faces in there. Um, Chloe Zhao, um, the best uh, director winner for uh, Nomadland, um, I believe, last year. She's, uh, she's directing the film, and she's a very good filmmaker, so... I'm going to go check it out, you know, see what's up. And bump that will be there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, early reactions um, are very, very positive. A lot of tweets are are more in the positive. This is from Tim Leong. Chloe Zhao's hashtag Eternals feels different than any other Marvel film so far. It's epic in scope, bursting with emotion, 
features so beautiful moments. Oh, features so many beautiful moments and is full of breathtaking imagery. Um, so you know, it. I'm looking for something different with this. Um, when it, I when I when I go to see it, I I will be expecting something different. I it, feel like uh, Marvel goes into a a sort of um, formula. Like a, for, exactly, it's, they they go into a yeah. formula, and so I will be looking for something different. Well, if these new movies start um, coming out in the same, I don't know, like genre or sort of like um, Shang Chi that did really well. And, you know, was eye-catching visually, the script was great, and the story was great, everything about it was just A+. Plus. Um, then I'll, you know, then those movies, if they're like anything like that, coming out in the future, they're gonna be, you know, a hit. So, that'd be something to look forward to. But if they're saying it's different than the other ones, which they've always said before, um, maybe this one will just be completely out of left field. I think it will be. It'll it'll especially be that way because they are representing Marvel characters that are not as well known as, say, the Avengers. Um, so that'll be something to um, pay attention to, definitely. Bump that. will be there to report on it. Oh my god. <laughs> um. New news is Whitney Houston's biopic has started casting. We've got a whole bunch of different people goodness there there are some heavy hitters in this lineup i'm just going to uh quickly read off this list nefessa williams from black lightning is whitney houston's assistant Robert, robin crawford clark peters from the wires and tamara tooney hey from law and order are her parents john and sissy houston ashton sanders is bobby brown and finally, Naomi Aki, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is Whitney Houston. Now, I don't know a lot about Naomi Aki. Uh, I saw a couple pictures of her. I think she could pass as a young Whitney Houston. I think they'll have to, um, you know, do her up a little bit in makeup and hair for uh, to pass her off as a little bit older. Um, but they're planning on going through pretty Just much give her... her some coke. Oh my! Oh, you're done. Just a Coke Zero, children. Coke Zero, sugar, and she will be there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, Naomi Aki as Whitney Houston. Yeah, just put her through some hair and makeup, and I think she'd be passable. Um, but so far, I really like this lineup. Um, you know, I think Whitney Houston, Whitney Houston's life is is very interesting enough to you know warrant a see-through of this movie um and bump that will we'll be, be there. There <laughs> to report on it when it yes. comes out um right now i don't believe that there is a date for when it's going to be released but um i mean they just have who's, the casting, who's producing so, yeah. who's producing this thing who's a couple uh, la 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 I wonder if it'll be similar to the recent Aretha biopic that just came out, which Ooh, I remember was really good. Yes, um, uh, Jennifer Jennifer Hudson killed, killed. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? I'm such a liar. Sony and TriStar Pictures will release the film in theaters on December 23rd, 2022. I don't know. I don't believe that. That is coming from Deadline.com. I don't believe that since they literally just cast it. But Colin, fake know. news. I just, Colin, fake like, news. But we'll see. I just hope it's not like a lifetime quality show. Or yeah, I I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Um, because it is like with those Jennifer Love Hewitt, those those lifetime films. I just I just <laughs> yeah. Because Whitney Houston, at the end of her life, it was like a tabloid kind of life. She wasn't really yes. doing too much. You know, it was such a waste of an amazing talent. That yes. I hope it's it gets like a good. I mean, is at the end of the day, this isn't going to be like a feel good story because it's tr we all know what happens. It's tragic. It's just not like, oh yeah, Whitney Houston, you know, died conquering the world with her music. No, she died, you know, tragically and sadly. So maybe so. they'll make like a whole thing about it where um, it'll kind of be like a, you know, at the end a donation or you know. They Mental don't health do that. awareness. If it's a movie, like they that. wouldn't do that. If a lifetime movie, possibly. Yeah, they would. For a lifetime. Be like, oh, 
Um, so it's the title is going to be called "I Want to Dance with Somebody." Um, it is. Oh, that's cute. Oh, I, I want to dance song. with somebody. Ooh, it's directed. I dance with somebody. Oh my goodness! Mm. What what is that? Why is that the lead singer from Pearl Jam all of a sudden? I want to dance with somebody. Brian wants to feel the. Heat oh, no 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 that's a uh, no 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 that's that's a mix of uh, Pearl Jam and uh, Hootie and the Blowfish. I want to dance with somebody. <laughs> Uh, it's being directed by Cassie Lemons and is penned by Anthony McCartan. Uh, neither of those names ring a bell with me. Nope. Um, oh, just throwing this out there, Stanley Tucci, of course, is going to play Clive Davis. Because, of course, He's Stanley bald Tucci... And white. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Stupid. Oh my god. Whoa, you got Stan Tucci in your movie? Oh yeah. Now you know it's gonna be nominated for an Did Oscar. You, another uh movie about celebrities is the new King Richard movie. Do you guys have you guys heard of that that one? You know, I've I've heard of it and I heard it wasn't very good. I I just don't know why it was it's about Serena and um the, the oh, the, oh, oh Will oh. Smith, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's it's about. I, that was like King Richard. <laughs> no, it's about the Williams sisters. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Their father, how King their father Richard. got. And I'm like, yeah. that seems kind of. Uh, uh. Dude, no, everybody's talking. Are literally everybody's talking about it. They say this is Will Smith's big ticket. Really? Um, to the Oscars again. Mm. He oh. said it's either him or Denzel this year. Um, and Denzel beat him last time they what were Den up. What is Denzel in right now? That is. He's doing the Macbeth movie with the Coen brothers. They're doing um, a. Oh, black that's a and white. In. So, and my my boy, my dad, Denzel. He don't do Your nothing. Your dad, wrong, so. Denzel. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, man. He, yeah. But um, Daddy yeah. But they say <laughs> Daddy they Denzel. say <laughs> they say Will Smith's a lock. Um, guy. Will, I mean, Will Smith is an incredible actor, and Pursuit of Happiness is one of my favorite movies. Probably, I mean, he should have won for that one, but um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the one. I got really um, to see that. I don't know, but don't in know. some other news, Leica Studios is celebrating its fifteenth anniversary this year. I'm a stan Ooh. of Leica. Woo, go Leica! Ooh. Fifteen years. If you do not know uh, what Leica Studios is. Uh, they've cr created the films such as Coraline, Paranorman, and, oh gosh, um, Kubo. Kubo. Kubo and the, is it three or five strings? Five string. Five strings. Great film. So they're the clay Claymation studio. Uh, they've made so many great films. Just, you know. Well, what I think been, what, what I think is incredible is that they've made five films, five feature films. Yeah. And each of those feature films have been nominated for an Oscar. That is a boast that neither Disney nor Pixar nor DreamWorks can can say. Oh, what was their their latest one? The Missing Link? Was that it? It yes, and I haven't seen it. I don't know anything about it, but for that to be nominated too? Yeah. Crazy. Like give what, me a break. Come it's on. Just the skills that have to go into making stop motion and it's like legit stop motion too. It's not, you know, the whole thing is just, you know, using 3d models to look like stop motion. No, like this is for real. So the fact that they go all, so in it's on these movies, stop, move an inch, stop, move an inch. Yeah, like exactly. that, like that one episode of iCarly. You know what I'm talking oh about? Oh my gosh. The alien. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The tacos. <laughs> Oh, yeah. right. burritos. Oh, burritos. And then it ended. <laughs> right. That oh, was my great. God. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um... Uh, freeze frame. Uh, freeze frame. Freeze frame. <laughs> Who moved my fingers? <laughs> <laughs> it was Timmy Tantrum. He thought they were toys. It was Timmy Tantrum. Stupid Timmy Tantrum, not you again. Yeah, get off my keys. They were there. They were free. Oh they were free territory. So we are happy for like uh, going strong on 15 years. I'm excited to see what they're you know up to next because Lord knows it takes a long time to make those films. So it takes three years to make each film. Could you believe that? They've got five films, 15 years, three years of film. Oh goodness, that'd be goodness, insane. Goodness. So congrats to them. Uh, another congrats is Animal Crossing. Freaking 
finally has a large update with much, much needed free content. So we've got activities, crafting, cooking, yoga, coffee. We finally have our... Brewster. Uh, yeah, our, you know, past Animal Crossing's lovers, uh, Lord and Savior Brewster <laughs> returning. <laughs> they were like, where's Brewster? They're outside with their little Animal Crossing pitchforks. And they're like, where is he? We demand him. And they finally get him. So happy for those people. Um, but along with that, because some DLC, paid DLC. So, um, uh, but that's attached to the new Nintendo Switch expansion pack. So they have the online um, service that you can pay to play, you know, the you could do a whole year for $25. Isn't that 25 right? Or is it 20 It's actually, it's, uh, for the basic membership, it's $20. $20. With this, with this expansion pack where you get the Nintendo 64 as well as Sega Genesis games. And if you, here's the problem. If, if you have Animal Crossing, then, or if you don't. It doesn't matter. The price is an additional thirty dollars. I wrote it wrong in our um, oh, notes. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an additional thirty dollars. If you have a family account, then I think the total is eighty dollars a year. Yeah. So it, but for a for one person, it is fifty dollars a year for a Nintendo Switch online membership with the expansion pack. Um, and people are really angry about that. It was fine, like, for the price that you were paying before, you are paying $20 the whole year for uh, the online subscription. However, people are like, 20 bucks a year? Like, what is even, why even bother? You know, it's mm -hmm. just kind of like chump change. Why 20 bucks? And now it's 50 and people are like, Duh, but my chump change and now you're <laughs> right. dumb things that should be free because the other ones were free. You got the um, Super Nintendo uh, NES games for free and that was great. But now they're adding the other ones and it has it's part of the other. Like, you've got these two now. I don't, I don't know. People are just kind of like, but why? Well, and, and here's the problem. There are a lot of problems with this. They are charging more than double for things that shouldn't be double. Um, as If you do not have Animal Crossing, it doesn't change the price. Right. It's so say, say for example, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to throw Joanna into the mix because she absolutely loves uh, Animal Crossing. Mm -hmm. Say Joanna, Brian's wife for some reason, did not have Animal Crossing, but she liked to play games online. She would still be paying this $50 for um, a, a membership that she is not using to its full potential. On top of that, if you say you do, say Joanna does have Animal Crossing and she plays regularly, but then she decides, oh, I'm tired of it. And so she gets rid of her membership altogether she does not have access to all the features that are that come with Animal Crossing anymore. The things that she once paid for are no longer available. Right. Only so only selected. She doesn't just get to keep the DLC that she originally paid for, which is exactly. like other games like you buy you have uh Breath of the Wild and you buy the DLC for it. It's yours. It doesn't matter yes. if you have the membership or not. You, you bought it. And so for that to be kind of taken away if you're like, I want to cancel my subscription. Oh, well, your DLC is gone. Sorry, even though you paid for it. It's like kind of sucky. Yes, exactly. Um, and when you compare it to other online services, such as Xbox Game Pass, um, you get up-to-date games with Game Pass. Sure, they're not the greatest games, but they're up-to-date. They are, um, you know, passable games. And they update the roster regularly. And so you have all these games that are constantly being updated and it's worth your money. With Nintendo Switch Online, um, that's not really the case. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm of course going to get it because I'm a total donk. But and I can't pass it up. I've got Animal Crossing. I too. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna get it. Um, I, no question about it, but it is really a garbage thing to do to uh, Nintendo's 
uh, loyal fan base. Yeah. Now, and, granted, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. They did that with the OLED too. It was kind of like why? Yes, absolutely. Why with the price? You know, it kind of and with what it came with, it was kind of dumb. Um, and now they're doing this. It's also just kind of like people are gonna buy it anyways. Just like you and I, we're like we're gonna sit here and complain about it. But <laughs> dang it, we're gonna do it anyways because it's Nintendo and you want it. Right. So, um. I, we've already Wesley and I already have an OLED on order. Um, I don't know when that's coming. He probably knowing Wesley. Dang. No, it's true. It's true. Um, and he'll probably wait until Christmas to give it to me, and I'm just I'm just fine with that. Um, and but I can uh, see you with this stupid little smirk, like I've got my own. Look at my sweet Oh yeah. Yep, there, it is. Yeah. there it is. There it is. And meanwhile, Timmy tantrums in the corner. I couldn't get one. Yeah, Dad, get it for. So uh, anyway. So there's a lot of anger and angst with the Switch online. Um, I I would have to sit down and think about how I would fix it, how I would improve it. But um, right now the fans are. I, they, they... I don't think that the Animal Crossing thing should have been attached at all. No, you it know that just been like its another... own thing. It could have been you know add. Um, so it's the Sega. An N64, they should have also thrown GameCube in there, and boom, yeah. that could have easily been the three that make it the $50 for yes. the new uh, expansion, whatever, of Nintendo Switch Online. I agree, or even um, if they wanted to throw in um, Game Boy, or even Game Boy Advance... Um, I would have games or something. Yeah, I absolutely. Know. I would have. I would have taken if they had just added one more thing. It would have been perfect. And taken out the Animal Crossing because I feel like that's yeah. really cheap. To that's do that. that should be its own thing. Yeah. Um, like uh, just like any other game, like Pokemon or Mario. Smash. It sh yeah. Yes, it should be its own DLC. Just leave it at that. So, so well, there we are. There we are. There we are. And. Uh, lastly, on the news list, Tiger King Season 2 confirmed. Nothing more to say. Let's move on. So <laughs> Carol Baskin killed her husband. Oh so, really quick, I, I know I've been talking a lot, but real quick, um, was it last, last weekend or, or a couple weekends ago, I was in Panama City Beach, and... My gosh, Dang. I can yeah. Whoa, yeah. Also, um, Carol Baskin killed her husband allegedly. Just allegedly. allegedly. Wink wink. Yeah. And um I so need a lawsuit on my hands. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> so while I was at the beach, I, I was driving by this um place. I, I guess I was just driving down the road. I have a picture here. It said Tiger King two that witch, Carol Baskin zero. Um, I don't quite know what they mean by that, but that was on a marquee outside of The Lick, which I guess is a um, a restaurant, a fine dining the establishment. The yes, L-I-Q. L -I -Q. Uh, fine oh, dining sure. establishment. <laughs> yeah. sure, that's what they call it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, for my bachelor party, we're going to The Lick. It's a fine dining the establishment. <laughs> Yes, so um, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, Tiger King season two confirmed. Oh what my more God. can they? He's in jail. <laughs> well, there were some. Um, one of the the people just passed away a couple weeks ago, so this thing is still ongoing. And 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 it's, and dude, it's he died because of <laughs> it was know, alcohol related. Something it was alcohol totally related. unrelated to the show. It's Carol Baskin, it was. allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, but um, I don't. I really don't Dang want to get you, into it. Carol Baskin, <laughs> at it again. Dang she you did. Carol Baskin. She did end up. Um, I don't know if this is spoilers or news or whatever, but she did end up getting possession of his uh, uh of his property, his entire like Tigerland kind of thing. He, yeah. she, she wow. did get possession of it. Um, so what I'm interested to see is more of that, like, guy that, um... The other guy. That, yeah, the literally, other dude, the other guy. Yes, the guy that has, like, six wives. Yes, exactly, oh, yeah. the creepy guy. Yeah. The creepy guy, that, that's what I'm more interested in, because that, that guy be, was... If they focus on that, that'll be interesting. He would that'll bring in, watching. like, the tigers to, like, Las Vegas, or, like, hotels. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. Exactly. And exactly. Like, yeah, oh, ladies, you want to see my tiger? Yeah. Well, here it is. It's in a hotel room. And they're like, let me just whip it out. Oh, whoa, whoa. Are like, whoa. we work seven days a week taking care of the animals. You know? Oh, my. And, and then we have to make ourselves available for Well, um, <laughs> available. As, as the wise, <laughs> as the wise saying goes, bump that will be there too. <laughs> Yo, I just about spit out my drink. Oh my god! <laughs> Poor that Tiger King season two. Oh my gosh! <laughs> the wise saying. Hey, real quick, real quick before we go oh to the gosh. segs, before we go to the segs, did you guys one thing quick since that'll be Tiger King two will be on Netflix. Um, dude, did you guys hear that Squid Games? That this is a show that probably costs like maybe five six million dollars to make it's on par to bring netflix in 99 million dollars i believe it Good for I, them. I, I maybe have, even more than that i believe it i've got in elementary in. i've got elementary school kids that should not be watching this going hey what's the about squid games yeah i know i i told them Look, ella dudes. said the same thing her friends were talking about it i was it. like, like what, what is going what on what the heck you gotta be no kidding. No, that is no, so no. Not a child show. But not a children's show, but good on you, Squid Games, for <laughs> being a good adult show. I, oh, my I, God. I Getting those kids to watch your filth. It's all over TikTok <laughs> and Instagram. So, you know, if a kid is on TikTok or Instagram, they're going to see Squid Games. It's been memed all over. Like, I literally cannot go on the internet without seeing artwork or meme yeah. about Squid Games. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's just all over. Even if the kid has never seen the show, they're going to be like, oh, red light, green light, oh, you died, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Timmy Tantrum's like, I've seen the show! No, you haven't, Timmy Tantrum. Don't pick the umbrella! <laughs> oh! So, um, yeah, I, I completely yeah. understand. Also, finally finished it. So good. Oh. Yeah. So good. I cannot wait for the next season. <laughs> All right, let's do these mini segs. We got uh, Big Sister with the segs. KT. All right, gang. Let's tone your tummy. So today we're talking shoulder touches, but it's not what you think. So you get into a plank position, your back extended, your arms straight out on the floor, feet on the ground like in plank position, uh, and you are literally just going to touch your shoulders, trying to keep your core nice and tight. Um, harder than you think, but um, easy to do. You're just really trying to keep yourself controlled in your center, um, and literally just touch your shoulders, alternating between left and right. Um, you could do about five sets of 10, and that'll be a good enough exercise. So that is a shoulder touch, plank, uh, eat local, exercise daily. Um, just do it, man. Speaking of it. exercising daily, I am switching jobs. Um, not to be announced yet, but I'm leaving the preschool. And with that, my hours have changed. So um, now I'll be in Gainesville, where Katie, uh, Katie and I will be in similar... Um, we'll be teammates! And uh, we both get up at the same time. However, uh, Hunter, my, my boyfriend, also works in that same area, and he's like, well, you're not going to be as um, active as you were at, this, uh, at the preschool, so you're going to need to stay active. So we're doing a gem membership at Planet Fitness, not sponsored, <laughs> to stay fit, because <laughs> I'm going to be sitting at a desk. <laughs> so. you'll, be more, you'll be more active than you think. I don't know. Oh, yes. I, I average about 10,000 steps a day. I average 16,000, so. Yeah. Uh, like, every day now, so we'll see. Yeah, it'll, it'll still be busy, but it'll be a different kind of busy. Uh, but I don't have an animation to um, recommend this week, but I do want to give a shout-out to one of the comments on last week's video. Katie, apparently your descriptions of those movies were amazing we got a comment uh on the last video saying that they were disappointed in brian and i for letting, <laughs> letting it go through the gutter basically that katie you did phenomenal just brian and i suck there's that so <laughs> we need to step I up our game brian we were such i a feel lot. vindicated i feel vindicated thank All you right. commenter 
Yeah. Uh, leave comments down below because I we do read them and they're. I mean, there's like two comments of the video. <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it really does uh, give us some insight to know what you guys are thinking. So thank you for commenting. Please leave comments. We we would love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, Brian, what is your stream of this week? So this is a stream you could take. You could take it or you could leave it, but. I like this movie. It's streaming on Amazon Prime. It's uh, it's a pretty scary movie, but it's also a lot of sci-fi. Um, so if you're a sci-fi fan, I recommend it. Um, that's pretty much it's Prometheus. Um, it's like the prequel to the original Aliens films, directed by Ridley Scott. There's not much to it. It's you know pretty your basic uh, science team goes off into space and. They uh, find a planet, which is, they think is like, ooh, and ah, until all of a sudden there's running and screaming. That was my Jeff Goldblum impression. <laughs> Pretty much what it is. Um, but uh, I like the movie. It's got a lot of good polish with it. Like Ridley Scott does that with all his films. There's a good, it looks great. Uh, the acting is really good, um, especially Michael Fassbender as uh, this android named David. Look, if you're looking for something to watch, you can't you can't do any better than Prometheus. It's a great film. I I recommend it. I love it. B plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now yeah, yeah, the yeah. chunk. Yeah, Welcome yeah, yeah. to the chunk. All right, we are doing our Marvel chunk. ranking. So, uh, like I said before, we're going to be doing nine because there's three of us, so we'll do three each uh, to do a nice even or odd, <laughs> nine movies. So none of them can be repeated. We're just going to be doing a tier list. <clears throat> so Brian gets the first pick, and then me, and then Brian. So Brian. <laughs> you what? said Brian twice. Oh, yeah, oh. you totally what? dissed Katie there. You were like, Brian, then me, then Brian. It's okay. I'm oh, often I, forgotten. I like, as the, middle, say, ch as the middle child, I am often forgotten. <laughs> I meant to it's say okay. that Brian, me, Katie. So, Brian, what is your first pick? Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, what? this is a... <laughs> I don't even know what happened there. That was weird. A um, bunch of doofuses. That's what anyways, happened there. This, this film is not only my favorite film in all of the MCU. It's one of my favorite films of all time. It's a movie that... I didn't expect to hit me as it did. It came at a time when I was really dealing with some daddy issues. It's Black Widow, isn't it? It's not Black <laughs> Widow. Yeah, cute, right? <laughs> Trying to be deep here. <laughs> Trying to be deep here. Anyways, my my pick is uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Part 2. I, and it's because I didn't see the first one, the first Guardians. I, I just watched the second one out of nowhere, just sat down and watched it. And I was just blown away how quickly I got into the film, how entertained I was by it, by the action. Um, it's probably just one of the best superhero films of all time without it really being a superhero. It is very Marvel formulaic. It does hit that Marvel formula, but it does it so well that I'll forgive it for being so, you know, cookie cutter. But it's um, great, great. Um, I mean, probably one of the best soundtracks of an of artist on a in a film. It's just I could listen to that soundtrack album every day. I almost do. It's like a straight up play me, play me, play me. Um, I watch the movie all the time. I can watch it with the kids. I love Rocket. I love Drax. I love Gamora. I love uh, Star Lord. Daddy I love Yondu. Yondu. I love Yondu. When Yondu is like, he wasn't your daddy, boy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, Yondu, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's such a great. It's. You know, of all the Chris Pratt movies where he's the Chris Prattiest, he's the Chris Prattiest <laughs> here. And that's what we want, America. So that's my note for the best Marvel film, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. All right, then. Oh, so I get... I, I'm next, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I have not seen that many Marvel films. Uh, I'll admit that. But I do have a good... 
a good list. You know, I've not seen all of them. Or many of them. Uh, but I think I'll go ahead and give it to Iron Man 1. Ooh, really? nice. Wow. Yeah. Good job. Mm. Wow. One, I think... It was my first one I watched, and I really enjoyed it. I think it just threw me into the whole character of Tony Stark, to, just to see who he is. And he's like the whole face of Marvel anyways, is Iron Man. So, um, I, I the first like scene of him going through the desert, and you're like, oh, you're all in, and this is cool. And then it just completely flips. You're like, oh, crap, this is real. You know, um, and then to see him go through like the trauma and get the the heart implant thing and try to get out of there, and then to figure out what he's gonna do when he gets back, I like that whole. I don't know. I just like that whole thing. Good, good film. I really. Oh, that it's one. such an entertaining film. Mm -hmm. Robert Downey Jr. is a star. You know, he was made to play that role. Yeah. Great pick. I mean, it's it's probably the most solid pick um, you could make. Truly. And it's the first one in the Marvel movies, isn't it? The first of them. The first official MCU before all the other Daredevils and Fantastic yeah. Fours. Yeah. This was the one that really started it. So, yeah. Alrighty then. KT. All right. So I'm going to go off the beaten path here just a little bit um, and go prior to the official MCU and I'm gonna say uh, 2000s X Men. Um, I thought we were got... just doing MCU. I mean, te technically, it's Marvel. I thought we were doing Marvel. I thought this is no, this is strictly Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe. I I can't do that, man. I can't. My my heart beats for off the wall. I know. Ones. I'm like, can I then put uh, Spider Man into the uh, Spider Man? Yeah, Spider -Man? that's that's. I mean, technically, it's Marvel Universe. No. I don't I don't see why but not. You you want the live action live action theatrical releases? Basically, what you want. But that's Look, e but even uh, what should call it is the one she said. Um, X Men two thousand. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that is a a uh, it's, but it's not like Marvel Cinematic Universe. So what? Um, this one I think sets the stage. I mean, In I fact... would have chose everything completely different. Well, then. now's your chance to <laughs> think about it as I'm talking. Oh, so uh, so um, Fine, this whatever. one. Want to go with X Men's? So I am a sucker for X-Men um, because, you know, it has Wolverine. And that's also going to lead into uh, one of my other picks, you know, if that doesn't give it away. Um, but I think X-Men 2000 even sets the pre precedent before Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, you've got a great cast, Hugh Jackman, Halle Berry, um, Freaking the two old guys. I can't even think of their names right now. Ian what? McKellen. How dare you? Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart. Got it. Lay off my back. I uh, nah. uh, I'm going to get this name wrong. Uh, Fam Famke Jensen. Jensen. As Jean Grey. Um, you, you've you got a, a great cast that does a phenomenal job. James, James Marsden as Cyclops. Um... It was just, it's fun, and it was new and unique at the time. Um, the CGI, eh, you know, doesn't quite stand up the, the test of time, but it, it doesn't look bad. It's still, it's still really good. Um, and I just love the, the setup of the entire thing. Um, the loneliness that you can, and the menace that you can feel, feel within Wolverine as, you know, as he's alone, but then he learns to, you know, adapt to this new family. Um, you've got Rogue that's learning to adapt to her new powers. Um, it's just a good ride. It's a movie you can just throw on and just feel good any old time. So that is X-Men. I'm going to call it X-Men 2000. So that's my pick. All righty then. Brian has been completely destroyed, so what do you have for us? <laughs> I feel like the rules that we set for this were like we didn't set any rules we just said marvel well i even said okay iron man is the first one when it clearly is not the first one of the marvel movies ever made but of that universe yes 
So, I don't know. You can't do? hold me down, Mom. Yeah, because it's Marvel. Iron Man is the first MCU film. It's oh. true. Mm, just, just go with your, just go with your heart. I'm going with mine. Look, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna stick to it. I'm not gonna pull out some like, oh, but you didn't say this. Well, if that means that so, we're just not gonna I have mean, the same answers. That means I would have gone with like Spider Man Two. Okay, or, well you're free. Or Spider Verse because I love those. Andrew Garfield, but, right? <laughs> no, Andy Garfield. No. So, so I'm gonna go with a really. Either way, this is a superior film. It's Captain okay. America: The Winter Soldier, one of the, just one of the great action films of all time. Period. It's a solid film. It's a great spy thriller. It's probably the best version of uh, Steve Rogers and Chris Evans as that character. Um, Tony Mackey as uh falcon uh scar joe as black widow probably way better than the actual black widow movie she's just kicks butt in this film um just a great robert redford um great phil a great 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 movie if you haven't seen it it's one of, it's the top three of the whole mcu <laughs> uh so yeah winter soldier all the way, all the way. Fight me on it. It's so good. Uh, I'll keep up with your um, your way, Brian, and not get off the beaten path. If I was getting off the beaten path, I would definitely choose Into the Spider-Verse as my first one. But since we're not going to do animated features or anything like that, we'll keep, um, we'll keep it rolling with the past Iron Man films. So, um, my second choice is going to... Oh, I don't know, man. Oh, there's... Okay, so I know that I've seen Infinity War and I've seen Endgame, and I feel inclined to pick Infinity War, but it's not my favorite. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Infinity War is like, you know... Oh! I'm not a big fan. Really? Mm. No. Oh, man. We're going to get some dislikes now. No. <laughs> um, okay, well then, that being said, at least I don't feel as bad if that's how you guys feel too. Then I'm gonna go with Shang Chi. Okay. And I know oh, wow. I know it's a yeah. new one, and I know it right. might be a little bit high up the list, but I really think that film did awesome. It was so enjoyable to watch the characters, the way it fit into the MCU. You know of what I what all I know about it. Um. I just loved watching that film. It really grasped, it held my attention the whole time. The characters, the environment, the animation, like uh, those water effects, ugh, it looks so real. And it wasn't even like, oh, it's from far away, or it just looked completely CGI. It looked real and it was up close, and they did a great job with it. So everything about that film it hit it for me. So, and the acting. The acting was great, phenomenal. So. Shang-Chi. Yes. No, it's a good left field pick. That's good. That's pretty impressive, actually. A and lot that, of that like Marvel there, or... diehard fans would be like, "How dare you!" But <laughs> you know, well, there'd be at the this same... point, at this point, do what you want. We got. They would X be the Man same people who would be trying here. to put yes. Infinity War or uh, Endgame at the top, and it's like. Well, no. duh, if you want to be like that guy, you know, you would put them at the top. Oh, they're the best because they concluded, whatever. Those are all the neckbeards talking. So, <laughs> uh, while I liked those films, it wasn't... And it's also coming from someone who isn't, like, super into the MCU like everybody else was at the time. I saw it when I hadn't seen hardly any other film. So, like, what happened to Thor... I didn't know. I didn't care. Wanda and Vision, I didn't know who they were, so I didn't care. Uh, and I had just seen, like, Guardians of the Galaxy, so I'm like, hey, I know those guys! And that was about it. So, I mean, mm. Meh. And, like, Bucky, I didn't know who that was, because I didn't see Winter Soldier. Aww, so, none dude. of, like, none of any of those characters... You gotta characters, watch Winter Soldier, kid. None of it those characters really had any place in my heart, like they Your husband would like it. If Watch it with your husband. <laughs> who, uh, Wesley? No, your husband. I don't have a husband. I have a boyfriend. He has your a future husband. husband. Both friends. There's no ring on this Woo! finger. There ain't no ring on this finger. Yeah, he ain't nobody. 
God. So I feel like if I was being like a um a normie or something, I'd be like, Infinity War was the best Marvel film ever. <laughs> I I just no. haven't seen them, so I don't really care. It didn't hold that emotional thing for me. But yeah, Shang Chi, it held the emotion for me there. All right, last so, stand. Go ahead. So my next pick off the beaten path is the Rise Eric Bana. Is the ah! Eric Bana version of the Hulk? No, I'm just Are kidding. Are you serious? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, Literally, I am kidding. I know. I'm kidding. That was a joke. Does that it was a the joke. Ti- the the click the clickbait <laughs> title of this episode, Brian has an aneurysm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no wait look look i like that movie i'm actually a big proponent i will defend that movie i think it's severely underrated but i was just like, however <laughs> however if you can't you know you can't see him but which, he's foaming which, at the mouth right now which hulk do you like better though do you like the old one or the new one? you know um you know, i actually hulks. yeah there's actually I, three hulks oh i like actually wow I actually think the best one actually, was Eric Bana. Actually. Yeah, I I actually think that Eric Bana actually, was the best one. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, what's his face? The the newer one? He's fine. He does a Mark great Ruffalo. job. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo does a good job. Um, but I don't know. This is something about Eric Bana. I think he actually like seemed angry. And so I could, I could believe all the time. <laughs> Can't you tell? Gah! <laughs> uh, uh. But no, my pick um, for the next one, to to the shock and surprise of no one, is Logan. Um, and that's my last off off the beaten path one. That my my last one is Brian's official this MCU. Close to having an aneurysm. I know, he's I know close. it. I feel like every other episode he's a, is about to have an, uh, an, an aneurysm. But yeah, he's doing Logan, this on purpose. <laughs> well, no, Logan. Okay, here's here's why Logan is so good. One, it is the end of a character, a definitive end of a character, and it was Whoa, emotional. Spoilers. Okay, for a movie that came out in 2017. I still haven't together. seen it yet. Oh, well, you I know think how it's it a ends. Total like given. No, yes. I've never seen it, and I. Oh, know all right. Well, wait, you know what? Wait why, a minute. Why are you waiting? Wait a minute. Here's the thing, though. At the end of the day, I'm gonna be honest. Spoilers She's don't bother me. It. No, spoilers oh, don't bother my. me because I'm Whoa. not a spoiler person. Whoa. Okay? Oh. I read the back of the book <laughs> before I start reading the front. Okay, Whoa. because you know what? I'm not lame like that. Okay, uh, someone I'm give him a, a medal minor. quick. Someone give him a medal quick. So, yeah, you could spoil come. Logan for me. It doesn't bother me. I'm still gonna oh see it. Maybe God. whenever I feel like it. So, and when and ahead. when you eventually feel like watching it, you'll see why it's it's so high on my list. It's not just that it, it's not just that I love Wolverine. This movie is a cinematic marvel. To me, I hold it as high as um, Fury Road, as uh, Mad Max Fury Road. No kidding! Wow. I I do. That's, I love Mad Max wow. Fury okay. Road. I I I hold it on the exact same plane. Um. So this movie again with Patrick Stewart. Pat, the 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 dynamics between Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman is beautiful. Um. Spoilers. Um. <laughs> Patrick Stewart is ailing as professor x and they live in a post-apocalyptic area kind of like in the out in the desert um you know there are some places that are like to- think tokyo kind of thing um but uh for the most part they live in squalor because reasons um and patrick stewart is an ailing professor x and he depends on hugh jackman for survival but at the same time uh, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine finds out that he's got a daughter, and Daphne Keen as Laura, or otherwise known as X twenty three, is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. She is a young girl that plays a very mature role, perfectly. Um, when I, when the mo- when the credits started rolling, I was sobbing. 
And meanwhile, Sarah Dunn was next to me like, yo, what kind of, what topics do you want on your pizza, man? And I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to financially recover from this. I will not. But emotionally. Right, right. Uh, KT becomes the Tiger King. <laughs> Uh, while watching uh, Logan. So it is a fantastic film. If you want a good action film, listen, it is the third highest grossing X, uh, X rated, R rated film of all time. Um, X and they're yeah, R rated. R rated. <laughs> R rated. <laughs> what happened to that film? Ooh, why haven't I seen this before? <laughs> good God. <laughs> Uh, you can say X for X Men. There you go. Ah, uh, ah saved it. Um, but uh, there is a reason for that. It is beautiful. It is awesome. It's uh, electric. It is Logan. Simply titled. Alrighty, Brian, you got your last film, man. <sighs> okay. All right. Here we go. You know, I, honestly, I think we should all come to a consensus since. On uh, number 10, when we okay. get to number 10, and just blur it out the first one that comes to mind, and then let's debate it, which should be okay. number 10. Okay. That's okay. Fair. But for my seventh pick, um, I'm going to go with a movie that is absolutely so fun, complete blast. It is the most lighthearted film in the, the, tr uh, the trilogy. It's the final in the trilogy. Um, and it sets up right before everything goes to poop in Infinity War, and that's <laughs> Thor Ragnarok. Oh man, wow. what a funny, funny movie! It Just was a great. blast. I mean, pretty much, um, they stole everything that Guardians had, and were like, let's just throw it into Thor. And see if we can mix that up That's with that character. Pick. And it was a genius idea because you had how Thor was just kind of a stiff guy. But then you get Chris Hemsworth with a little bit of comedy. And you get some the magic The first scene there. with him where he's hanging by a chain. Like, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Sorry, I can't mm -hmm. help it. It's just doing it on its own. <laughs> Look, it's like, oh, okay, keep going. <laughs> it, it's, just, it's just so fun. It's just, just a weird superhero film. Uh, just a lot of random stuff. Kate Blanchett is in it. What's for me? Kate Blanchett is my one of my. She is probably my favorite actress of all time. You know what? Because she has fun. She can do serious, serious like art house drama stuff. But then she'll just do an Indiana Jones. She'll just do a Marvel film, and she'll just be like, "Hell, I'm gonna go out there and have some fun and just kick it up, girl." And that's what she does as the villain in Thor Ragnarok. Hulk is in there. He's great. He's so. Funny. Loki is in there and he's just like, you know, I'm bad. So why do you keep putting up with it and all this stuff? <laughs> um, Tessa the... Thompson as Valkyrie is so cool. What a cool, tough the girl play. character. The play when you meet the dad. Oh, Matt Damon is in there. Tony so Hopkins. Funny. Um, you got some Doc Strange uh, Stranger in there. Oh, that was a funny scene too. The whole thing Doc was funny. It was like yeah, the movie is so it's a really funny comedy action movie. It, it's really good. I just enjoy the crap out of it. The guy um, from Lord of the Rings. I can't remember his name off the top now, of my head. Oh yeah, Carl Urban is in there, um, and he's great. You see, now it's breaking my heart because I forget the director's name. And he's like got his fingers in everything now. Oh, he's... um, uh, he's got a really weird name. Um, don't say that. That's his, mean. His name is out there. Um, oh shoot, it's killing me. But his fingertips are all over this movie. He plays the rock guy Korg, um, too, and he's got that great New Zealander accent. Like, hey there, buddy. Uh, Ty Taiwa, uh, Taika Taika Watiti. Yeah. Uh, and he is just a genius. Mad genius is Taika Waititi, who's just doing everything and touching everything and just making it better. Thor Ragnarok is great, man. Such a fun movie, dude. Such bro. a fun film. <sighs> now I gotta pick mine. I'm I'm tied between two really great films. Oh man, I can't decide which one I like better. 
I'll save the other one for number 10 slot. Uh, maybe you guys will agree with me. We'll, we'll debate it. Yeah. I'll go Guardians of the Galaxy number one as my good, good final pick. pick. That is such a funny film. The opening is funny. The characters, just the way they introduce everybody. The opening is sad. It's where the kid's mom dies. Okay, well, after that, and it's just, you know, the, the music. He's got his mixtape, and oh. he's just doing his thing. Hey, yeah, hey, exactly. The, the, the music just sets the theme for the whole movie. Come get your love. And it was kind of the start of like the hilarity of the new Marvel films, um, like the whole kind of like revamp of it. I think. Yes. And, no. I and agree. it was great. It was so funny. I think that was one of the, like the first Marvel movies I picked back up after uh, Iron Man, and I was like, oh, "This is so funny. Where have I been? You know, I've never heard of these characters before in my life, and I had such a fun time with it. All of them. Groot. I love that guy. And when he turns into baby Groot, he was even better. And then he becomes a, a teenager, and he starts cursing in the next movie. But just him as himself, he's great. Rocket and Groot dynamic together. And then Drax, just being an idiot, but thinks he's so smart. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I love those characters. They're so funny. Um, and Gamora. Gamora looks like our cousin for some reason. Loida? <laughs> Loida. <laughs> so I think that's why I vibe with it's Gamora. True. <laughs> she kind of looks like Loida a little bit. Kind of strange. A, a lot. A lot. Yeah. Um, and that's that's a good thing. That's a yeah, great thing. It, it, uh, she's a uh, very. She's very she's good. gorgeous. Yeah, she's gorgeous. And um, Star Lord's character is just great too. And and Yondu, just meeting all of the cast. So, I will put that one as my last film because it's, it's a it's a hoot to watch every time. You guys are gonna absolutely hate my last pick, but it Haven't is we an MC. The last two already. Well, I don't know why because they're perfect. Uh, <laughs> but it is an MCU film, and I think it's it a lot of be. it's a lot of fun. It's very thank nostalgic. The Lord. Yes, thank the Lord. Nostalgic. I'm actually that? yes. It is very nostalgic for any '90s kid. It is Captain Marvel. I think oh, it is. Oh man! Yes, no yes, uh, I did it. Uh, I said it. Marvel. I'm yes. not a fan, dude. I love it. I love it. Uh, um. So here's why. Let me let I me mean, explain it's, it's, myself. It's it's good, definitely not great. It is super Marvel formula. And That's all I'm yes, gonna say. I That's I will I'm completely say. agree with all of those statements. <laughs> here's here's why I love it so much. You have the '90s nostalgia. One, they got me. They done got me with um, all the references like garbage, nine inch nails. Uh, flannel man, you got man, me. You grew up in a Christian home. You don't listen to that stuff. Um, <laughs> while whilst that is the God's honest truth, our go father back to was... your Sandy Patty, okay? Oh, my Sandy Patty! Oh my God! <laughs> um, our father was very much a proponent of my musical upbringing, rock and roll. Um, so yeah, that was very much me, present. He for was me. like, "Let me educate your daughter." Pretty much, yeah. Um, so you have, you have the nineties nostalgia you have, it's a lot of fun, um, with Samuel L. Jackson again as Nick Fury and Brie Larson, uh, debuting Carol Danvers, who Carol Danvers is probably one of my favorite superheroes of all time. Now I understand what the fans are saying, those hardcore comic book readers that are like, oh, they made Captain Marvel such a, like a Nancy, like, um, Oh, she's just naturally good at all uh, of her a Mary powers. Sue. A Mary yeah. Sue, yeah. They, yeah. you know, bleh. you know what? Get over yourself. It's still a fun movie. It's fun to watch, and and you can't help but root for her um, as she's, you know, trying to, you know, do the right thing. She's just trying to do the right thing. Dang it! And Lashana Lynch as Maria Lambeau. You love her character. She's being supportive of her best friend who she hasn't seen in so long. And she just dives in it. Um, you've got um, a, gr you know, a good. I won't say a great. You've got a good um, enemy. Um, you know, some twists here and there, but really, it's just a fun film. It's got some comedic moments, um, and it also sets it up for Endgame, um, which I think they completely underutilized Carol Danvers, which is a travesty. 
Um, but it's just a fun film. So my pick is Captain Marvel. Mm. Go Air Force. Okay. All right. At the count of three, we're all going to say our final pick. and then Give me will... one second. Give me one second. Okay. I, I got it. I got it. And I got then it. we will all debate to the death on who should get into the top <laughs> okay. ten. All right. Okay. So one, two, three. Iron Sam Raimi Spider Man. Iron Man three. I said Avengers. No, I said I. You know, I think that's better than my pick. I said Sam Raimi's Spider Man. The first one. Yeah, the first one. Once again, I'm off the beaten path, but there it is. I said the first Avengers movie. The first Avengers. I I agree with uh, that, the first Avengers. Looking I, at I might my, have to agree with that. Looking at my track thing that i had my tally i had avengers right next underneath iron man 3 so yeah i'll go with that Yay! i'll go with avengers Yay, Yay, wins. so know, so much I, for debating to the death it you know? actually <laughs> wasn't even on my list i had ant-man but then i was like uh ant-man is a great film i really loved it it was super funny go paul rudd just you know a, a paul rudd fan Woo-hoo. um the train scene with the ant perfect perfect antony <laughs> Anthony, uh, the train, Thomas the train, uh, chug a choo choo. <laughs> I think I peed a little when I saw that, that so scene. Funny. Like... And then the ant running out, he's like, that's <laughs> gigantic. <laughs> that's too funny. Um, but no, I think the first Avengers movie should be on the list. No, I think 100%. It's, I mean, listen, Josh Whedon, if you haven't seen him in the news, he's kind of a punk right now. He did Hasn't he always really... been? I I had no idea, but apparently he's done some pretty crummy things to a lot of his female actresses that he's worked with in the past. So that's kind of coming out right now, and he's kind of like in douchebag city. Um, can, can Whoa, we PG rating. Can we say that on the show? Okay, sorry. We'll put a. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyways, you, we'll um... put a, we'll put a a, a skeeter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyways, but still, the work that Whedon did to bring all these different characters and put them together in one big super jam-packed superhero action movie was great. You know, all these different personalities coming together. Everybody gets a little bit of screen time. The end battle scene, the Battle of New York, is just so much fun and just Hulk smash forever. It's just great. And uh, yeah, I guess was this the introduction Loki also the character Loki? No, Loki came in the first Thor movie. Okay, um, so I didn't see that, so I didn't know. Yeah, but it, even if I didn't see it, it was still a good introduction. I knew who he was. I Loki had the whole is idea about yeah. Him. Loki is still probably the best villain in the MCU. And at it the was end of the great, day, great, great yeah. film just to kind of go into. I that was the first one I had ever seen other than. Iron Man, so, you know, but but, uh, I didn't know any of the other characters who are, you know, you know, Iron Man and Hulk, basically, that's it. But, like, Hawkeye, I had never heard of. I had never heard of Black Widow before. So, even without prior knowledge to the characters, it was a great film to step into. And it was just an overall enjoyable film. It was actiony it was suspenseful joanna fell asleep when we saw it in theater oh <laughs> wow. my god she seems like that kind of person anyway. at the when uh during battle of new york when uh everybody's <laughs> laughing when hulk grabs loki and this is like rah, rah, rah. Yeah, yeah, joanna yeah. was joanna literally woke up and was like why is everybody laughing oh, was like, oh, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> no but Jeez. so what, what do you guys have to say about the film that's I already said my piece, so. Okay. It's all Katie. Okay. I laughed. I cried. It moved me, Bob. Fair enough. Fair enough, Larry. So that's our top ten. <laughs> wow. Top so, 10 Marvel films. Our top ten Marvel films. All of it. Starting from number one. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, Number 2, Iron Man, Number 3, X-Men, Number 4, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Number 5, 
Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Ooh. Number six, Logan. Number seven, Thor Ragnarok. Number eight, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Number nine, Captain Marvel. And number ten, the Avengers. Dun, 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 dun. I think pretty solid list. I think people would probably more be more offended that I- Infinity War or Endgame are not mentioned. But honestly, I'm kind of offended that Black Panther isn't on here. But never saw it. Well, you know what? You need to wake up, okay? Because there's a world out there called Wakanda that's just. Um, excuse me. That's a country, not a world. Whoa. You need to calm down. Whoa. You need to calm down. Whoa. But even like, um, no, no, but we didn't say Doctor Strange or. Yeah, yeah or, or uh, Ant Man and Wasp. Uh, Doc Strange didn't even make my top 10. The first Ant Man made my top 10, but not yeah, the second. Yeah, the first Ant Man's on my top 10, too. I never saw Ant Man and the Wasp, so I don't know. Um,. But even like the Tom Holland Spider Man films didn't make it either. Yeah, oh, well, I'd, if if it I'd were, I'd rather eh. watch the old ones. If yeah. it were our own individual top ten, this list would look vastly different. Yeah. Um, for each of us, um, there's definitely a, um, there's a plethora, for lack of a better word, of films to choose from, um, that that could you know greatly vary any of these lists yeah so. you definitely would put P- fantastic four on your list right um that is the biggest lie any i've never seen a fantastic four movie that i liked like of of like the silver I surfer think is your number one uh that is a lie that is a lie from satan you need to repent so <laughs> no 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 well, no, no. anyways, that is our top ten list. Uh, if you guys agree with any of our um, rankings, you know, let us know in the comments down below. If you are like, where the heck is Infinity War in a game? <laughs> let us know down in the comments. You know, get mad. Get angry. Hulk smash. Hulk smash that like button, too, if you agree with us. <laughs> Hulk smash that dislike button if you're like, you guys are trash. Um, next week for the episode, we're going to be going into more Halloween themed as we get closer to Halloween. Everything Halloween themed except for movies. So... Oh, I thought, am I being loud? Hey, no, remember what happened continuous. before we started this episode? Okay, look what you did. See what you've done? <laughs> No, no, no! I thought she liked my my musical background. Yeah, I like it, but that one's just like. Uh, oh, uh, my bad, my bad. Uh, Please continue. I like the more like. Oh, okay. Let's let's go with that then. So everything except movies. We did movies last week, so Halloween films last week. So this one will be taking into TV shows. Halloween episode specials, video games, horror games, anything that is excluding movies that is Halloween or scary themed. So we'll be doing that next week. Um, Once again, thank you guys so much for listening to this week's episode. If you guys like this episode, please leave a like. And um, yeah, that's about it. I am your host, Ileana. We've got Brian in this corner. X-Men, you picked X-Men! We've got KT in this corner. Why, yes, I did. You got a problem with that? And we are uh, signing off on episode 41 of... 42! Why do we keep saying that? 40 freaking 2. The answer to the question of life. 42. Episode of Bump That 42. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we will see you in next week's episode. Bye-bye! Bye! Bump that...